Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 8. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the various fuel strategies and load sensing types that we have available to us in our Holly EFI software. So whether we're going to be working with our speed density, fuel flow rate based style fuel tables, or our volumetric efficiency style calculations, we're going to be finding that we need to understand what we have to work with and why we might want to choose one over the other. We're also going to be taking a look at some other combinations and some oddball types such as alpha N or the speed density alpha N combination or the volumetric efficiency alpha N type combination. There's going to be a whole bunch of things to cover and look at in this video. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at the various load sensing types we have to work with in our Holly EFI software. Whether we're gonna be calibrating a Holly Dominator or HP system, we need to know what load sensing type to work with so that we deliver proper fuel and spark timing delivery to our engine based on the application that we're going to be tuning. So first and foremost here, let's jump into our system ICF. We're gonna go into engine parameters. We're gonna move here into load sensing. This is gonna be where we select the load sensing type this is going to be essentially the different fuel and spark timing strategies we have available to work with within our Holly EFI software. So we can see right now speed density is going to be the primary default type that it's going to be set to. Any of the base global files or the custom global files that you find available from Holly are all going to be based on speed density. We're not going to be finding any that are based on the VE option. If we take a look down here, VE based, we are going to find maybe one or two based on alpha N but for the most part, speed density is gonna be the type that's gonna be selected on. So let's take a look at speed density first, and let's jump in here to our base fuel. We can review what that represents. So within our main fuel table or base fuel table here, we can find map pressure is the load input to our table. We can find in this situation, we're working with a one bar scale in this particular table that we're uh, taking a look at here. So it's gonna go from zero KPA, full engine vacuum, up to 100 kPa here, that's going to be our atmospheric pressure on a naturally aspirated engine. And we're gonna find, um, working with this, we also have engine RPM on our other axes. So depending on where we're operating at in our manifold pressure reading and our engine RPM, it's gonna be sourcing a value in here to deliver fuel to the engine. Now the values within the table here, they're gonna be in units of fuel flow rate and units of pound per hour. So if we're taking a look at a particular point in the table here, let's just grab this point um, in operation. Let's say we're assuming we're hitting the cell point. We're gonna see this as 106 pound per hour of total fuel flow rate we need to deliver into the engine. So if we know the number of cylinders we're working with and we know the fuel injector size, we can figure out what the amount of fuel we need to deliver is per cylinder and turn that into an injector pulse width. The injector pulse width is how long the fuel injector is open and closed for to spray fuel into the engine. We actually can see that status right down here if we have our live data running on the engine. We can see injector PW 2.21 milliseconds. So that's gonna be what the injector is gonna be rated at. We can see how much the injector is opening and closing based on what we're programming here in the table. Now this is what's known as an injection time-based fuel strategy. So if we move our values up in the table, it's simply gonna be moving up our injector pulse with delivering more fuel. Moving our values down in the table is gonna be decreasing the injector pulse with delivering less fuel. So it's very, very simple. By knowing here, again, our engine, um, our number of cylinders of our engine, our fuel injector size, it'll convert that into an injector pulse with based on what we're programming here in the table. So this is suited to naturally aspirated engines. It's suited to force induction engines. It can be used for pretty much any kind of engine mapping. Um, it's not going to have any real disadvantages unless we're talking about having a huge camshaft installed or individual throttle bodies, which will lead into our next. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.